Some educators fret over whether or not to use letters A through F or numbers 4 through 0. Words would be best, but parents and society want shorthand symbols for easy marking and sorting. In a messy enterprise, humans like to classify. So let's instead attach grades to specific descriptors. Ask teachers from the same grade level and subject to define each of the symbols they use for their grading, including A, B, C, D, and F, or their cousins such as O, G, S, N, U, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, checks and check minuses. Very likely, there'll be substantive differences in at least a few of their definitions. Assuming that we prefer consistency among our grading approaches, what can we do to better align definitions? Start by personally defining each mark and then discussing definitions with colleagues. What does an A really mean when it comes to our unit on ancient civilizations? What is a B level performance in our unit about metaphors and analogies? And how does that compare with the beliefs and practices of other seventh grade English teachers? In a perfect world, we'd have no letter grades, only descriptive narrative feedback. We teach many students, however, so we've invented a clerical shorthand, grades and grading, in order to get through the day. But over time, we've denuded grades of meaningful, useful feedback and left instead a limited system of tiny symbols that sort children. Consider A, B, C, D, and E. I mean F. Well, you know what I mean. We skip over E quite often because E could stand for excellent. That means F stands for failure, of course. No. A doesn't stand for awesome. B, better. C, conventional, complacent. D, duh. Or for some, done. No. The grade, number, or symbol is supposed to be a placeholder for the much longer description of evidence. By itself, it is nonsense, communicating nothing without the evidence associated with it. Look, Mom, I got a sailboat on my project, a carrot, a heart, a moon. Oh, no, I got the dreaded penguin. And then we make another mistake. A lot of us worship inappropriately at the math altar, thinking a mathematical calculation of the grade adds credibility. Ultimately, this can undermine our goal, however, clear and accurate communication. On a 4.0 scale, for example, a 2.0 is usually equated with a letter grade C, but that's not supposed to mean that the student achieved a C-level performance out of an A-level performance possible. Getting a C out of an A is not getting a 2 out of a 4, because that would be a 50%, and that's an F grade in most schools. A 3.0 on a 4.0 scale is considered a 75%, and that's a D in many schools. A D grade doesn't mean almost excellent anywhere on earth, as is most commonly associated with a 3 on a 4.0 scale. We all carry subjective baggage when it comes to grades. When most of us were growing up, C meant our work was average or normal. This is not the case anymore. In most school districts across North America, B is the new average. C now equates to less than preferred or poor. Many of students' parents today look at a C and ask their child, what happened? And then sternly add, you'll stay after school, mister. This is not acceptable. Let's try an experiment. On a 5.0 scale, what would you accept as a descriptor for a performance of 3.5? Satisfactory? Proficient? Almost proficient. Average, above average, adequate, competent. Two of these are never used with standards-based or reference grading, average and above average, or really any kind of average. Average tells us how the student is doing in relation to classmates in larger groups. Because we're standards-based, however, we want to know how the child is doing in relation to the learning target. So. Tell us if he understands proper stretching before exercising, or whether or not she can determine the cotangent. Not that he's about in the middle of his peer group's performance. To continue with this 
3.5 on the 5.0 scale example. Let's choose Satisfactory, but this time let's use a different scale, the 100 point scale or percentages. With percentages, we describe Satisfactory, what would it be for you? 70? 80? 90? 87? Mm, 94? 100? And will that be the exact same percentage for each of your colleagues in your department or grade level, let alone other departments or grade levels? When asked of most faculties, there is often a variance of 10 to 20 percentage points for the exact same descriptor. Without identifying and calibrating evidence for each level of performance, what grades mean will vary teacher to teacher. And what if we tried to rubricize the 100-point scale with specific evidence descriptors for each level? Imagine trying to write out all those descriptors for each of 101 levels, 100 down to zero, finding just the right words that mean slightly less than the word in the descriptor above it. We'd run out of words after four or five levels. Smaller scales have higher inter-rater reliability. This means that what I would mark as a 3.0 or B level proficiency on one student's work, you would also judge as 3.0 or B level proficiency in your class. We are consistent. Most schools who value consistency in grading, but also honest, clear communication, they migrate away from the 100 point scale and towards smaller rubric size scales that can facilitate specific evidence descriptors that provide more helpful feedback. Standards-based grading means we are evidentiary. We rally all reports of student progress around evidence of learning, not purely mathematical calculation. We do whatever it takes to make grades meaningful and to maintain instructional integrity. Our grades mean what they say.